So I'm going to talk about a program that we've developed in South Africa after I've learned it from my dear friend, Diane, <laughs> on ACES uh, at Temple University. Um, so the program, uh, the empowerment program that I'm going to talk about is called FORFA. And FORFA is a Sesotho word for the ability to fly or to soar above what you have. And so we chose this because of the, the type of people that we include in this program, the participants, which is mostly cerebral palsy uh, young adults, uh, some um, traumatic brain injuries, uh, and most of these guys did not have an uh, AAC device before they came into the program. Uh, we only allow uh, young adults from the age of 18 into the program, so that means that they ne never had an AAC device throughout their whole schooling um, career. So the focus is, uh, of, the, of this program is on empowerment. So in the literature, we, uh, there's a lot of uh, um, being written about empowerment and psychology. However, if we look at um, people with disabilities, which is uh, so, such a vulnerable group, because they're disempowered, and we, are, we, we really um, struggled with the idea of getting information about people with disabilities and the development of empowerment. And that concept uh, we, we realized is not re really fully explored. So when we developed the program, we really looked at focus on two issues. The one is to develop skills um, and, and competence in using the communication device. Uh, and the other thing that we had to look at is, but what's the hierarchical development of empowerment per se? So we, uh, the existing literature, there's lots about capacity uh, and, cap and de developing skills, specifically when you look at uh, um, communication devices, because people like Light, Janice Light, uh, talked a lot about how to develop co communication competence. Um, so when we looked at, but what's the under, underpinning uh, concept or construct of, of empowerment, and how does this help us to build, um, to build empowerment in these guys with severe communication problems? And we found that we have to look at the, the stages of develop, uh, the stages of uh, the development of empowerment together with this capacity or the skills development, and really get a rich understanding of where these guys are. So uh, we have to focus on this interplay between the skills and uh, the skills or the capacity that they develop as well as the external environment. Because if we look at the model of empowerment, we see that if there's, if you look at the blue, if you look at, empower, uh, at the environment, it can be non-facilitatory and or the person outside or the, the, uh, the person himself also has vulnerabilities and that that interplay between the external environment and the internal environment of the person, that makes if the person is, if it's facilitated or strong, and therefore he can become empowered. So if you look at the environment, we look to specifically, for instance, the, 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 the opportunity for these guys to have AAC devices, as well as what kind of support they get from the outside world environment. But if we look at the person himself, we look at the internal motivation. And we saw that that internal motivation contributed a lot to their levels of empowerment. Um, we all know, just briefly, um, that AAC gives us, our AAC users, um, the opportunity to become uh, um, competent communicators and therefore they become empowered. And as Diane said in one of her articles, is finding a voice, just, just be able to, to speak up and speak up, is already empowering for these guys. But in our situation, we find because of poverty, mainly, and therefore the lack of uh, the, these guys having AAC devices, their communication competence did not develop at all. And I still don't know how they made it through school. Um, so 90% of the guys attending our, pro our program are coming from impoverished areas. They do not have the opportunity um, to use an AAC device in school, they come to us without the knowledge of using a, a, a device. And therefore, and in the whole of South Africa, because AAC is relatively new, um, we do not have role models all over that they can, that they can, role, they, they can um, um, look up to and, and uh, see what, 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 what they want to aspire to. So we have to develop those role models in South Africa. 
Um, so, and, and we have to look at the social, social validity of this whole issue and, and really explore, and with this, um, the role models are so important. You just have to take my word for the following series because I'm going to go through it very quickly because we want some discussion time. Is we, we based our, our uh, um, development of the program to two um, main authors. The one is Arai, where she talked about the five stages of development of empowerment. And the first one is powerlessness. Second one is the awareness that there's some possibilities outside. And that's where our people started. They, they, they didn't even know that anything is, uh, there's possibilities or opportunities outside that they can develop to. Then the next one is very important, connecting and learning, where I connect to the outside world, I learn new skills, and now I have those skills, and now I want to go to the next one, which is mobilization into action. I want to move forward, and I want to do something. And the last one, which is the most difficult one, is contributing, where you contribute to society. Whatever you've learned, I can contribute to society and teach the society something new. The next one was Zimmermans, and Zimmerman was talking about um, three components. In Interactional, intra-actional, and behavioral. And that's what we base the FOFA program on. Because if you look at the, the aims of the program was the communication competence, um, the how to uh, empowerment of these guys so that they can plan for the future and really make them aware of what are the opportunities outside there. Just a glimpse of what are outside, what can you aspire to. Um, I don't want to go through this because just the lack of time. Um, so, in the measurement of these guys, how to measure empowerment, we look at two things. The first one was the skills and capacity, which was from the users, the AAC users' point of view. They had to fill in the, a, a, a self-rating scale, uh, which was a like, like a um, type scale with four points, uh, on what they perceived as their own communication competence. And the next one was on their perception of empowerment. However, we felt that this is not, not enough. And we had to go further and see, but what, can, what are the observable, measurable indicators that we as outsiders can observe and measure these guys' empowerment levels on? Because we felt that they were not um, objective in their own reporting because they felt so good about themselves when they learned something new. Um, so it's not always objective. So we, we tried to, to get this, um, where is this interplay between the competence and the skills of what they perceive and what outside people perceive about their empowerment levels. And therefore we looked at things like, for instance, what Diane taught us very competently, the daring to dream, that they, they have to point, uh, pinpoint or write down their, their dreams for the future. And from that, we um, ask them specific steps, but what are you going to do? Step one, step two, step three, what are you going to do? And from there, we could actually see um, that they reach these goals that they put down there for themselves. So we looked at these um, kind of things so we can make observations. So this is one example of, of a Daring to Dream map. So you can see here in the middle, that was, that was Lebo's um, uh, dream. You want to open a fish shop, a, a fish and chips shop, uh, which is a takeaway that people can come there and you can see the tables there and I had to draw it with checks. It must be blue and white check tablecloths and blue and white curtains. And he was very sure what he wanted. And so we, we uh, this, so the first step that he had to take was to get the people involved and people that he had to phone. But then you see there the picture of him with a, gradu with, a, with a graduation degree cap on. And he said to himself, he has to go and, and get some more information. He has to be taught by somebody how to do this independent entrepreneurship. So I think that's fine. And Neo was his connecting friend that he has, to, uh, he has to go to. If we look at resources, he had to get an electric wheelchair. He does not have a computer. Because at that stage, they didn't know that the computers that we gave them was theirs. So it was kind of a surprise. So he thought he had to get his own computer. And he had to get a, a school where he had to go and study. And who was the, is, uh, on the, on the left-hand side, who is his connecting people, that supporting people that will help him to, to reach these goals. At this stage, Lebo does have the computer, he has his electric wheelchair, and he's studying business, business management. So, um, Lebo moved from a very rural area um, to another very rural area uh, after, after his so-called matric or standard 10. And and there wasn't support for him there. And I think that was one of the, the contributing factors for Labour to move on in life. 
which I'll explain a bit later. So our, our results, I'm going to discuss three guys. All of them are cerebral palsy, um, all of them ethetoid, ether um, and they all participated in the program for four years at that time. We are go I'm going to contrast the skill, uh, skill and competence data with the observa observable measurable indicators relying, uh, uh, relating to empowerment. And I'm going to give some explanations as we go along. So on the, on the left-hand side, you will see what we observed as outside, outsiders. On the right-hand side, you see what the, their own self-rating. Now this guy, I want to tell you, um, you will see that uh, by at stage, it's first on, on the left-hand side, T1, it's time one, so it's year one, year two, year three, year four. Um, and he actually increased on his communication competence in, in his own words, as well as what we observed onto, onto year three. Year three, he said, but he, wasn't, he, he, wa he was actually doubting his own communication competence because his device broke down. And he had it for a whole year. He didn't, did not have the access to a device. And the support systems where he was at did not give him the correct support to actually to, just to, to um, um, fix the device for him. And therefore, you can see by the, by the end of year four, he was going back, he was regressing on empowerment. And there was, a, uh, there was a certain contributing factors, which I'll explain now. So just in short, what, this guy ha what happened to this guy? His support system, which was his mother. Now, we never train a person uh, in the program without a support system, uh, a personal assistant. So the personal assistant comes with him to the training, are trained in the same way so that that person can go back and support this guy. Now, this mother, we only realized a bit later that she is not a very good support system to this guy. And she was not really helping him. She was running a drinking house, okay, at home, in her home. And she wasn't really, con uh, uh, con con uh, she wasn't really concerned with what, what's happening in, in his life. So that was a huge problem. And therefore, she, didn't even, she couldn't even take the device uh, when it was broken. So for a whole year, he was without this device. He went to hospital without this device. He was very ill, and people couldn't understand him and just sent him home. So he had a huge problem with the support system, a huge problem with his communication device, everything external. His internal locus of control was very high until year three, and then he just gave up. And uh, he just couldn't because of the external support that just wasn't there for him. Now, participant three for me is the most important one because this is our guy from the rural area that went from one rural area to another rural area without any kind of support. And we see really the difference there. With participant number two, he had too much support. And he had a therapist that was very caring, very loving, and wanted to do everything for him. So he never learned to stand on his own two feet. But with this guy, the, the, the wonderful thing was that he had no support. He had a family member there that didn't really know anything about disability, a friend that was a disabled person himself, and, but they know, didn't know anything about ASC. And this guy decided he's going to stand up and he's going to do his own thing. And his internal locus of control was so high that he carried him through. And he went back to his day room to dream step, step one, step two, step three, and he implemented each step. And that's why I said now, Lebo is doing his, um, a, a course in, business management. He's going to open not a fish and chip shop anymore, but he saw that the need out there is an internet library, an internet cafe. And I and carried him up the steps in Pretoria <laughs> to look at what's an internet cafe inside. <laughs> so, uh, so his whole perspectives change as well as he grew into this, uh, into, into uh, become empowered. But just look at what his own self-rating was. And I think for us, that's the most important to realize here, is in year four, the bottom one, his own self-rating went down because he was looking, he was comparing himself to what people can do outside in the real world. And he said, but I cannot get there. And I think for us, that is, the, that is the most important thing to realize, is the importance of social comparison uh, in empowerment. And where the uh, case number two wasn't really uh, comparing himself because he had this overprotective uh, uh, therapist, 
um, that was doing everything for him. And he thought he was well away and he was fine, but this guy is realistic. And although he progressed on an empowerment level because he's contributing in his own society, in his own community, he, he perceived himself as not as good because he's comparing himself to the outside world. Um, I'm not going to go through this. I said this already. I think for us, for the, uh, lastly, the important thing here is this one, that we, ha we cannot work on uh, empowerment for, with AAC users if we do not uh, work on communication competence. Uh, if communication competence using the AAC device is not there, we cannot work on it. So the, social, the support of the environment is important. And it's not just the personal assistant, but it's also to have an AAC device that's reliable and working. It's the role models that I have to compare myself to. And lastly, it's my own internal motivation. If I'm not motivated, nobody else can motivate me. I can, I can take you there. I can take the, the walls to the water, but I can't make you drink. And the last one is that we have to continue further with this research and see but what is the, the interplay between the, the capacity and the skills and the le development of empowerment. Because it's not just capacity in using a device to, um, to uh, increase empowerment. So with this, toda, is that the right word? Thank you very much.